Francois, you worked on this stadium, yeah? Yep, boss, that was me. All right, so tell me this. Why is it leaking? Swear and tear. You built this last Tuesday. I don't appreciate this tone, boss. I put blood, sweat, and tears into this bro. There is literally video evidence of you on a Nintendo DS when you're supposed to be building it. Yeah, obviously. My Switch broke, so I had to use that. <laughs> Yo guys, it is your boy Niren here, and you are watching FTW. This is of course the series where it brings you the best and more frequently the worst of what football has to offer during the last seven days. But what's been kicking off in the world this week? Well in the UK, there was a test of an iPhone notification for serious emergencies. On the 24th, we all got an alarm that would go off if we encounter a danger to society. So it goes off daily in the Mason Greenwood household. It was meant to go off at 3 p.m. but caught out those expecting it by coming a minute early. The Don in charge of sending out a notification must have got a little bit too trigger happy. I'll be honest, I got a shock to the system whilst reaching for a jar of peanut butter in Tesco. And I can imagine it was very inconvenient timing in the world of football. And now, a moment of silence. Oh, fuck it. Right, all we need to do to finish this surgery is make a small incision on his ACL. Oh, Jesus Christ, that made me jump. Yeah, no, his legs come off. Now then, let's move on to the football. And in the Premier League, Manchester City v Arsenal was somewhat of a league final. Arsenal needed to win to keep their title challenge in their hands, whilst Manchester City were trying to capitalise on the Gunners' poor form. But one thing to remember here is it's Arsenal. We mustn't forget. So then I said, don't you already have a husband? I mean, um, anyway, oh, sorry. Welcome to the news. In today's headlines, we're fucked. No, genuinely, it's a wrap. Manchester City are too good. The Gunners were put to the sword by Pep Guardiola's Man City, suffering a 4-1 defeat and crushing blow in the title race. We're fucked. Goals through Kevin De Bruyne, John Stones, and a record-breaking Erling Haaland did the damage. And Erling scored with his hair down, looking like the Bournemouth badge. Maybe it's he had a serious message for Rory Jennings after breaking a Premier League record immediately. It's personal between me and I'm going to do you some serious harm, you big stiff idiot. Okay, all right. I managed to grab a goal, even with Rob holding, holding him. And the poor supporters, man, they've already got their excuses sorted out when someone asks if they're watching Arsenal matches from this point onwards. You no, know I didn't ever watch football when I was younger. Still don't now. All I want to do is go home and not think about it. Meanwhile, Mikel Arteta was not taking things well either. He was found digging through City's FFP records after the game. I was trying to bargain with Pep Guardiola at half time after going out of every other competition. I've got nothing left. I've got nothing left. Rob Holding was upset with the result until realising Erling Haaland was in his FPL squad. The Saka that arrived for this one was not quite the same as the rest of the season. Meanwhile, Aaron Ramsdale was beaten far too easily again for the first goal. His highlights from the first half, oh, very poor geez, indeed. Geez. Former Manchester City man Sean Wright Phillips had to check in on his dad and Arsenal legend Ian Wright on Twitter. He was celebrating in front of his dad after the game. Are you going to accept that, Ian? He's so annoying. Someone, <laughs> someone I talked to wee. I taught him how to wee, this boy. Yeah. And Tottenham fans were pleased with the early goal going in too. They'd be celebrating again at the end of the first half through John Stones. Well, go on, generals. But the maddest reaction to all of this came from troops who had a domestic live on stream. This fucking woman walks in here and then they fucking score. Now nah, cut. Now nah, cut, bruv. Now nah, be being fucking deadly serious. No, don't smile at me. I'm being deadly serious. Leave the room. Leave. You're not watching it. How can you walk in here and fucking score? Edison was not ready to comfort the Arsenal away support, bringing out the tears celebration in front of them. It's a shithousery award for the Brazilian shot stopper. And honestly, this was a lesson for Arsenal. They're just not ready for this sort of title battle right now, or certainly to face off against City one-on-one. -on -one. Still a great season though for them. We can't forget that. And it is crazy progress from last season. Couple more new faces and they could challenge again next season. It's been a shambolic week though for Tottenham, who faced up against top four rivals Newcastle and lost 6-1. These lot were five nil down in 20 minutes. Honestly, if you replace the players with wardrobes, they can see less. Tottenham were bullied. I've not seen a collapse like this since Jack Grealish out in Ibiza. Genuinely, might as well disconnect about nine minutes in. Tottenham fans were hoping their phones were buzzing because of the emergency notification, but actually it was the fifth goal alert. Christian Romero was ready to pack it in after 10 minutes. This football club is finished. Wahali, it is finished. Newcastle's admin could hardly keep up with the situation. Do you understand how mad it is when even the opposition strikers are baffled and Jacob Murphy was in a pure state of shock. Oh. 
Harry Kane could be seen trying to get out of the war trenches on a 20 minute mark. This was embarrassing, which is a statement that's thrown around a lot in football, but this was a complete capitulation here. Tottenham fans were leaving after just 20 minutes, and Captain Hugo Lloris would only last 45, as he was substituted at half time with an injury after conceding five. It was probably a back injury from picking a ball out of his own net constantly. The man's got more points on his license than points in the league this year. The man is done out. Tottenham have needed a new goalkeeper for a long time now. One man who has left the club is Danny Rose, and he was not impressed with their performance at all. His own was a little bit more inspirational in this outfit. <laughs> The man's looking like a train conductor for God's sake. The match was ultimately a last dance for interim boss Stalini, who's been sacked and replaced by Ryan Mason. An interim interim, you know. Antonio Conte and Stalini were surprised to see each other at job centre. Hello. Hang on, mate. Fancy seeing you here. Meanwhile, with all these new interims getting a chance at the helm, the assistant canteen officer's ready to throw his hat in the ring to try and get the managerial role. My reputation speaks for itself. Won the treble on FIFA 22 with Manchester United. That's not, not been done since 1999. The performance was so poor that Tottenham have actually reimbursed fans who travelled to the game. Imagine the money that Spurs fans could have racked up if they were reimbursed for all of their poor performances. Meanwhile, Chelsea fans are outside the stadium trying to get a reimbursement for their entire season. I'm in your, I'm in your. And speaking of the Blues, one comforting thing for Tottenham is that at least you're not Chelsea, who lost 2-0 to West London rivals Brentford. Look at the positives though, Blues fans, alright, at least you scored in your own net. And as Piliqueta own goal, as well as Brian and Burmo, heaped yet more misery on Super Frankie Lampard. Average goal. The only explanation for, for how Frank Lampard is performing is he's getting revenge for his original sacking. Todd Bowley's realised the error of his ways, and he's trying to get the attention of a former Chelsea boss, so he can slap him back in the managerial role. Come here, Potter! Now! Raheem Sterling was not holding back on his opinions of Chelsea's opponents here today. Fuck Brentford. Meanwhile, honestly, as a whole, this is an absolutely mental situation. And you know what it is? I just, I don't think Frank Lampard even knows all the players at the club. You can't tell me he's met that entire changing room. It's too large. Madueke is still waiting for an appointment with the guy. He only found out that Dennis Zakaria is a Chelsea player on Sky Sports News. I genuinely don't know where Chelsea go from here. But at this point, they're just a train station from West London now. There's a lot going on off the pitch at Chelsea too, with talks progressing to bring Maurizio Pochettino back to the Premier League as boss. The poor geezer going from Daniel Levy to Todd Bowley is like going from gonorrhea to syphilis. Honestly, the poor guy, he's got to put up with Todd Bowley's shit on a regular basis. Trying to work out how to respond when the Americans suggest using an early draft pick for next season. Please, please, please. Fuck right off. And I can't imagine he'll be too impressed with the players either. He'll be taking drastic action four minutes into watching Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang for the club. But is this the right appointment? I mean, he's a good manager, but I'm not totally sure. Then again, he came second in a one-team title race with PSG. So the way Chelsea are right now, it's a perfect fit. In yet another crucial clash for Champions League football, Manchester United drew two all with Spurs, having been two goals to the good. The Red Devils started well, but were pegged back by Pedro Porro and Hung Min Son in the second half. And I've got to say, Eric Ten Hag's substitutions were definitely a turning point here. The Dutch manager asking his side to find their inner arsenal and overperform this season. Unfortunately, all they chose to do was throw away a two-goal lead like them. Fred was disappointed on the way home after giving the ball away 26 times. But as I said, it started well for United. An early goal from Jadon Sancho, then Marcus Rashford taking on Eric Dyer, who honestly plays like he spent the evening in spoons. He had to explain to Ryan Mason why he turned up hungover. I chose the wrong day to turn up with a sore head. Look, I'm gonna be straight with you now. I've had a bit of a late one. Feel a bit ropey. New Spurs boss Ryan Mason was crestfallen down on the touchline just seeing Eric Dyer walk out onto the pitch. And David De Gea knew he could sit back and relax seeing goalless Richarlison heading towards him. Christian Eriksen returned to Tottenham as a Manchester United player and got a good reception. Honestly, they've had a worse two years than he has. And he literally came back to life during the period. But Spurs did make a comeback with Harry Kane and Hung Min Son combining to appease FPL fans who haven't changed their team since 2020. 21. The points were shared, but if you're a Tottenham fan, Champions League football is looking very unlikely. United are through to the FA Cup final with a Wembley win over Brighton. This one went to penalties where Solly March missed an all-important spot kick. He sent that ball into May, May. Valt Veghorst kissed the ball before Solly hit his pen over the bar. Just having his DNA on the football meant that it was guaranteed to see a strike off target. That's how bad Veghorst is. That's not even a real name. Meanwhile, there was a Don in the crowd getting a trim whilst the game was happening. 
Where can I book? All right, yeah, let me just sort out this fade down the right hand side. For fuck's sake, man, you've got to score that vow. Come on, man, sort your feet out, for God's sake. Meanwhile, I can't lie, we might have to revoke Karo Matoma's dribbling diploma. He completed zero take-ons versus right back Wan Bissaka. Here was Aaron reacting to Karo whipping out his 2-1 degree. Oh, oh, scary. Oh, shiver my timbers. Shut up, man. And they'll be joined in the final by Manchester City. Who else? Who beat Sheffield United 3 0 thanks to a Riyad Mahrez hat trick? Blades' mascots were completely baffled by Jack Grealish's legs. <laughs> He's taking it well, to be fair. Those kids are going to be all struck when they see his thighs walking down the tunnel. Look at the size of that fucker. Meanwhile, having had to do absolutely nothing for 90 minutes, Stefan Ortega couldn't believe his wage-to-work ratio. I cannot believe that plum wheel is going to pay me for yesterday when all I did was watch TV and slope off for a crafty wank. I'm being paid to wank. It's my perfect job. In completely unheard of news, Liverpool actually won two games this week, the first of which came against Nottingham Forest. Former Red Nico Williams scored, and there was an interesting celebration between himself and Morgan Gibbs White. Here we have Morgan to Nico as soon as he completes a pass in training. Jesse Lingard was in the changing room trying to boost morale after the defeat. Do you want me to rap anyone? Live for me a bit. No, we don't. Meanwhile, for Liverpool, and more goals conceded once again despite the victory. Nice to see us go back to our old style of defending, which is no defending. Now, back at Tottenham, and the dad of Spurs right back Emerson Royal reckons he needs more. He reckons he's too big for Spurs and needs a big move to Real Madrid. Could you imagine Carlo Ancelotti seeing him no look to a ball boy. He's calling the mafia. Just like his son, Emerson Senior has poor positioning. Poor positioning of his actual brain. West Ham won the FA Youth Cup this week with a dominant win over Arsenal. The second goal was absolute filth from Gideon Kuda. And after the win, Hammers captain Declan Rice got involved in the celebrations with them. Burnley have been promoted to the Premier League as champions with a victory over local rivals Promotion. Blackburn. And their players were giving it large to the Blackburn supporters. Celebrating with a trophy in front of them after leaving them behind in the Division. No, Vincent Company wasn't having it and apologised. Sorry, oh, I'm sorry, don't hurt me, sorry. Boys, this Caicedo was talking about his dream move away from Brighton this week. Not that he wants to leave, he recently signed a new contract, but there are obviously still a lot of rumours around the Ecuadorian. After a full year of practically no wages, he's just happy someone's willing to offer him a clean sheet bonus, no matter how small it is. A protester that disrupted an Everton game a couple of years ago by tying himself to the goalpost is set to be released from jail this week. He doesn't need to disrupt Matt at Everton anymore. They do that themselves. And speaking of Everton, they lost to Chester in a friendly recently. Non-league Chester, you know, with some, like, big players playing. They're, they're actually done for. These lot are genuinely going down. Their fixture with Leicester is going to look very interesting when they realise a draw will put both of them out of their misery. Meanwhile, at Sunderland and loney forward Joe Gelhar got a shove from a defender in the area. He wasn't too pleased about it, but when his side scored just moments later, thought he would return the favour. I don't know why this has been been recommended, but a woman on Twitter has decided that it should now be law for a partner to get head when their team loses. Now, obviously, football Twitter has run riot with this one. I honestly, look, I hear it, and the population of San Marino are going to be loving this news. Of course, it's happening just as Liverpool actually start hitting some form. Meanwhile, Arsenal fans will be doubly disappointed when they can't get it up because of the depression they're suffering after another Gunners defeat. Please, Willie! Yo, Willie! Oh. Brixham have been promoted to League 2 as champions after a 3-1 win this week and the scenes were beautiful at full time. It represents the end of a 15-year wait to return back to the Football League. Ryan Reynolds interrupted a post-match press conference to steal Ben Foster's match-worn shirt and the A-listers were out in full force here with Paul Rudd spotted outside the ground. Who would have thought? Not me. Supporters of the Welsh base side are going to have to get used to changing times and work out how to welcome their new international fan base. <laughs> well, I like lads. Guten Tag. <laughs> Speaking of bootlegger, this man is going to be wild times for him. His internal organs are going to be petrified seeing 6.8 metric tons of alcohol enter his system. Now, in Spain, there was a big shock in La Liga, and I'm not talking about the Disgust. logo, as Real Madrid was slapped by Girona 4-2, with 24-year-old forward Tati Castellano scoring all four goals in the game. Angelotti was not looking too pleased down on the touchline, looking like a Star Wars villain. <laughs> Why, sir, what would you like to do with the Jedi Master? 
One Barca fan managed to sneak into the Girona crowd and was firmly enjoying the result. Meanwhile, the rest of the crowd just didn't even bother paying for a ticket. Vinicius Jr. was not happy with Spanish officiating either, laughing about it on Twitter. Real Madrid in the Champions League, a very different beast to Real in the league. Barca had a mixed bag of results this week with a 1-0 win over Atletico Madrid, who were determined to end up with no one left on the pitch come the end of the game. The referee's notebook is as thick as a Harry Potter book. Diego Simeone was left frustrated when his left back didn't attempt to amputate Gavi at the ankle. Meanwhile, someone tried to amputate Sergio Busquets short straight off his body. At least take him out to dinner first. But Barca did lose to Rayo Vallecano 2-1. Poor timing from Barcelona's admin on Twitter, saying their goalkeeper is better than anyone before conceding immediately after. Now, Lamine Yamad became Barca's youngest trainee at 15 years of age. A bright, bright star and wonder kid talent over there at La Masia. Xavi said he needed an extra player and the coach knew exactly what to reach for. A child. No. And speaking of Barcelona's youth, they scored this very intelligent goal whilst all of their opponents were off the field, running the ball into an empty net. Meanwhile, Luka Modric was pictured with Roma legend Totti this week and claimed the Italian was a childhood hero. I'ma be honest, I thought they were the same age. I thought they went to school together. Valencia and Valladolid's game in La Liga was very eventful this week too. I'm convinced that Valladolid's goalkeeper is involved in match fixing, so I don't know what this howler is. But with the scores level going into the 90th minute, step forward Javier Guerra Moreno, a youth academy graduate at the club who scored his first goal in just his fourth appearance to drag Valencia out of the relegation zone. What a feel-good story. Now, there were dramatic scenes in Italy as Napoli almost certainly wrapped up the Scudetto with a 90th minute winner against Juventus. Fans in Naples were delighted and were following the team bus around the city to celebrate with the squad. But honestly, the road traffic police know that they've got their work cut out after seeing this footage. Yep, talk to me. Uh, there are reports of 478 separate bikes speeding down a, a road in the middle of Naples, if you could copy. Excuse me, do you copy? Stefano, I, I know you're there. In France, and Kylian Mbappe transformed into Franklin from GTA. Honestly, loading screens on that game still take less time than PSG winning the Champions League. Montpellier defender Pedro Mendes is reportedly not happy with the club's physios. After spending two years out with injury, seemingly they just didn't know what they were doing in assisting his rehabilitation back into the starting eleven. Apparently, said physios were reading books on how to deal with the situation and had him running far too early, which of course aggravated the injury further. Can you imagine looking over and your physios finding out how to treat you Using chat GPT. I just hope for his sake that there were no emergency notifications over in France. All right, hang on. Let me just piece this muscle back together again. Oh, not again. Down in the third tier, and there is a crazy race for promotion at the moment. Versailles are one team aiming to get into Ligue 2 right now and needing a goal in the last minute. Step forward their goalkeeper, who managed to convert late on in this one. Meanwhile, staying in the third tier, and Nancy played against a side called Atletico, I believe based in Paris this week. Around the 13 minute mark, though, and after putting a ball out of the ground, there was a stoppage in play because they had quite literally run out of footballs. In Germany, and Mainz secured a surprise 3-1 victory over Bayern Munich, with Thomas Tuchel's poor runner form continuing at the club. And they tweeted, Mainz and Man City, one thing in common, scoring three past Bayern. It's a shithousery award for the Bundesliga side. At Borussia Dortmund now, and Karim Adeyemi is being brutally assaulted by Jude Bellingham. And speaking of the English wonder kid, he decided to throw his shirt to members of the crowd. It was called by a young family and the first thing they chose to do with it inhale it. Honestly, I think 80% of women in the UK want to do the same. So now that it's time for your goals of the week and we've got some acrobatic efforts this time. First of all, take a bow. Sean Jeffers over at St. Albans. A cross is put into the box firmly behind him. He somehow managed to strike this ball behind him with crazy technique and find the bottom corner. Staying, as I said, with the acrobatics and we of course head over to West Ham where Pablo Fornells put a cherry on top of the icing on top of the cake against Bournemouth with an unbelievable scorpion kick. And and finally, over in Uruguay, Hull fans will remember Abel Hernandez fondly. He's over there and scoring beauties with yet another bicycle kick this week. Over in Japan, and we almost had a sensational goal there too, with a halfway line strike finding the back of the net, only to be cancelled out through VAR and to then see a penalty awarded to the opponent, which was then converted. Over in Russia and at Zenit St. Petersburg, they were 2 0 up before conceding to have their deficit halved, and their admin tweeted, Let's not do an Arsenal after 
after the Gunners bottled two goal leads back to back. In Turkey, and Mauro Icardi was getting a little bit overconfident with a penalty for Galatasaray. Wondenara is somewhere typing up why she's leaving him for someone that can actually take a penalty. Meanwhile, in the Netherlands, and there were crazy scenes at Groningen versus NEC, where a beer was thrown from the crowd at a linesman. It connected with the linesman's ankle, and because of a new rule that's been made over in the Netherlands, where if an official is struck by anything from the crowd, uh, a game is abandoned, and that is basically what happened here. There was like a stoppage in play. Now, I hear it, don't throw stuff from the crowd, but that does seem a little bit excessive. Hello all, and welcome to the beautiful game. The segment where we take a look at the poetic and brilliant side of the game that we love. We are back by popular demand for yet more glorious beauty. <laughs> and that concludes the beautiful game. Over in the Czech Republic and at Bohemians, a ball has ended up outside of the stadium, right? It's gone so far over the bar that it's ended up in the car park to be smuggled away by a set of fans. Except they decide they don't want to smuggle it anymore and want to kick it back into the ground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, listen, I don't think the club are signing him up any time. Over in Portugal, and what a story for Kazuyoshi Maiura, the famously well-known Japanese footballer who made an appearance in Japan aged 56. Well, he's moved to the Portuguese second division and has now made his debut there as well. Staying in Portugal, and how about this for serious bad luck from Hill Vicente, who couldn't buy a goal if they wanted to, constantly hitting the bar and having strikes blocked away. <laughs> So FIFA's realistic after all. Over in Norway, and how about this for a footballing food abomination from Lielström? A pancake hot dog. I, I've got clinical depression at just looking at this meal. Over in the A-League, and there was madness there between Perth Glory and Adelaide United. A game ending 4-4 after three goals in six injury time minutes. The final one coming from 17-year-old Nestori Irunkunda. In Mexico now, and we've got a contender for the worst corner routine of all time. Montesinos. Le pegó el caucho. No, no, y bueno. Y Mira nada más, ¿en dónde terminó un tiro de esquina? Mira nada más, ¿en dónde terminó el tiro de esquina? <laughs> Listen, taking your corner to a corner for the opponent in three kicks, that is impressive stuff. Speaking of self-sabotage, and over in Poland, I respect the enthusiasm of wanting to tackle anything that moves, but you probably shouldn't tackle your own teammate. But at least he has managed to put in a tackle, unlike this man, who's been sent breakdancing by an attacker. Some say this man is still spinning. Absolutely raucous stuff over in Greece between Olympiakos and AEK last Sunday. AEK Athens made it 3-1 in the 90th minute before the owner of Olympiakos, who's also the owner of Nottingham Forest, decided to invade the pitch, kicking a ball onto the pitch himself, and it was, this was then followed by Ultras, who decided to do the same. Todd Bowley is somewhere writing notes on how to avoid Chelsea losing, but closer to home and down in the championship, Bristol City's Alex Scott was named as Young Player of the Season, something that Ahmad Diallo, on loan from United, wasn't too happy happy about. He's disappointed now. Wait until he finds out he's behind a Beyblade in the United pecking order next season. Meanwhile, at Leighton Orient, and they were promoted to League One this week. Massive congrats to them. But they found out halfway through one of the most recent games and just celebrated on the pitch whilst the other team watched them. Now that it's time for the moment you've all been waiting for, because over in Romania, we've got a couple of stories from this beautiful nation this week. First of all, starting with an absolute horror story of a tackle in a Bucharest derby, where this rapid player managed to escape with just a yellow card after making an opponent do up gymnastics. I think this might be a federal offence in some parts of England. And a second story, we take a trip down to the fourth division where a couple of ex-Romanian internationals decided to sign for a club and play in a game down there that they ended up winning 22-0. Now this was partly down to the fact that the other team couldn't field 11 players and so instead had to form a side out of eight juniors. So obviously they got absolutely battered. This other team wanted to actually quit the game, basically forfeit 15 minutes in, so it was only a 3-0 defeat but their opponents decided to pay for them to continue in the form of food and dinner for this young group of eight players to basically bribe them into finishing the match. Absolutely mental stuff and something that could only happen in Romania. Over in Brazil, and what in the fever dream is this? Why am I seeing a 14-foot tall Pele mannequin walking out onto the pitch? Down in the non-league, and Morpeth Town were facing off against Rylands into the 90th minute. They go from 3-1 down to 
three, two. A corner's put into the box, and you know what happens from here. Goalkeeper, grab yourself a goal, sunshine. In America and Pittsburgh Riverhounds, what a name, by the way. They got the name of the club sorted. Next up, find a competent goalkeeper. In Colombia, and time is of the essence. These lads do not have the time to help with their teammates' cramp. In the Netherlands, and I think we've got a couple of people a little confused about what sport they're playing. <laughs> Shouts out to Ghana, man. If you can't beat them, join them. Because they've developed their very own version of Luis Suarez. <laughs> In the Finnish Cup now, and you thought we were done with goalkeeping howlers today. Absolutely not, I'm afraid. In Mexico now, and we've got the very unusual fate of being tackled by a ghost. Up in Scotland, and what better image to get fans excited and ready for a football match than a pigeon that's made its demise on the stairs of the ground. And over in Malaysia, you never know when you're going to get your moment in the spotlight as a substitute. So you've always got to be ready, preparing, practicing for your goal celebration. Two. Now there is time for still nil-nil, and you guys know the score by now. This is a segment of the show where I bring to the best of Sunday League and amateur football. And this time around, we have got a stereotypical, perhaps the most stock standard Sunday League fullback imaginable. This left back has picked up the ball and gone on a sensational run, skipping past players at will, using his pace and work ethic, but at the point where he needs to provide a little bit of combo. The greatest moment I've seen. The joke about being left back in the changing room is reserved for this man. On to the weird stuff though now. First of all, we've got the story of probably the the worst team in Europe. Take about Willem 2, 4 from the Netherlands, and why would you not just call them Willem 6? Who have managed to concede an incredible 339 goals in 18 games. That means they're letting in a goal at average every 5 minutes, and they've even lost once 35 nil. Now we spoke earlier on about the incredible Kazu Mayor in the Portuguese second division, and the fact that he was making his debut for the side age 56. Well, unbelievably, he's not even the oldest player to feature in Europe this season. Introducing Mikola Likovidov, who played in the third tier of Ukrainian football for Real Farmer, aged 57 years and 85 days this month. And finally, over in Algeria, a pizza shop that had been bearing the badge and name of Italian giants AC Milan received a letter this week from the club itself saying that it had to change its name for legal reasons. Yeah, whoever owns this, this restaurant in Algeria is clearly a Milan fan, but unfortunately, the gig is up. That, though, is going to wrap up football this week, and I hope you have enjoyed it if you have then feel free to slap a like on the video and of course subscribe if you're new to the channel you can also follow me on social media it is at the official fng on twitter and on insta it was a pleasure ranting at you guys today have a wonderful day enjoy yourselves and goodbye